Palembang. The Musi River comes from the from deep in the interior of Palembang and his and has its source in the mysterious Barisan Mountains. During her long journey to the sea many leaves, branches and trees fall into the stream. Weary of life they drift calmly along to the mighty ocean. At night, these fallen giants glide past Palembang, looming fast and black in the moonlight. Now they are almost at their journey's end and need only to pass the delta. Sometimes a branch brushes against the shore, filling the air with the mystic incense of the jungle, so that one is seized with a feeling of mingled joy and sadness. Europeans commonly say that all the rivers of the East Indies are the same, i.e. grey and monotonous. I cannot share this opinion. On the contrary, if one wanders about for a long time in Sumatra, one sees that every river has its own character. Some are old and slow, others young and playful. The Musi is broad and complement and is broad and complacent like an aged man. The camp are glittering and full of jubilant bird songs. The Patang Hari is a cruel white hot pool of fire and the Pane is like a mysterious serpent, silent and beautiful. Every river has a voice of its own and often in sleep one hears it singing like a muted sky. On moonlight, on moonlight, on moonlight, like young ballets of, of Palembang hike a boat and go rowing with their sweet, sweet hearts. They glide past the Chinese horses built on rats. Inside one catches a, inside one catches uh, one catches a glimpse of red enameled, uh, red enameled altars, colored dragons, and images of smiling gods. If anyone in the house has, has died, lilac candles are burning. The quiet flame reflected in the mud murmuring water. As it is now, so it was a thousand years ago. Palembang then was a mighty kingdom, who influence extended over. A large part, a large part of the archipelago. Since eighteen, since nineteen eighteen, when Professor Codes, dean of the French School of the Far East, published his amazing discovery that in the seventh century, a kingdom of Srivijaya lay in South Sumatra, an army of famous scholars have attempted to reconstruct this mysterious realm for ancient chronicles and travelers' accounts. They succeeded in proving that Srivijaya originated about 683, subsequently extended its power over all South Sumatra, conquered by Malay Peninsula, and in the 8th century sent an army to Cambodia, when the king was taken prisoner and beheaded. After that time, the king of Cambodia, even mourning, bowed off to the west in the prayer as a tribute to the Maharaja of Srivijaya. He owned a pool path with silver and connected with the river by a canal. Every morning, an orderly, an orderly threw in a pile of gold and at ebb tide, when all these bags of gold appeared glittering in the sun, the monarch looked out from his great audience hall and rejoiced in the in the sight. In the ninth and eleventh centuries, Sri Vijaya had monasteries in Bengal and, and in South and South India. It was a great flourishing town with more than thousand Buddhist monks, pilgrims from China, for who wished to visit the Holy Land of India, lingered here for a long time in order to learn Sanskrit and to become imbued by the teachings of Buddhism. In 747, the town beheld two famous priests within her walls, Vajabodhi 
and Amoga Vajra, who brought the magic teaching of the Vajrayana to China in the 13th century. Sri Vijaya seems to have declined and in 1377 it was conquered by the Javanese. From the beginning, however, scholars have been surprised to learn that Palembang is so poor in antiquities. One could not imagine that there were so few temples in so large a town. For this reason, I decided to make a careful investigation a few years ago. Although these attempts were crowned with success, one cannot say that the antiquities found were in accordance with the importance which, which Srivijaya is supposed to have had. It must be remembered, however, that the ancient fields of Palembang have been plundered for centuries by the inhabitants. It is also possible that the rulers of this country had less inclination to build temples than had their contemporaries in Java and Cambodia. Well, when I came to Palembang, a great inscription that had just been found in the east part of the town. At the top, at the top it had a canopy of seven serpent heads. Of seven serpent heads. This reminds of an inscription for from Ligo in the north of the Malac in the north of the Malacca Peninsula, 775 AD, in which the kingdom of Srivijaya is called the patron of the Nagas, their heads hallowed by the streaks of the luster of gems. As well as as well of the statement of a Chinese in 2025 that the kings of Palembang had sprung from the sprout of serpents, this gives re this gives reason to suppose that the inscription is Buddhistic. Helas, the writing is Helas, the writing is so weather weather beaten that only a few words are decipherable, but from the form of the letters. One concludes that the inscription dates from the 7th or 10th century. Under the text is a funnel evidently intended for the draining away the weather which was poured over the stone during certain ceremonials. An excavation made at this spot resulted in the discovery of about 30 rough calligraphed stones, nearly all bear the inscription Jaya Siddhayatra. And some, in addition, the word Sawa Satwa, and the and work uh, and were evidently led there by pilgrims who had come to this spot in order to partake in certain ceremonials. It is plain, therefore, that the Jaya Siddha, the Jaya Siddha Yatra initiation could be followed by that of the Sawa Sawa Satwa, giving. The faithful and even greater beatitude, the expression Sri Vijaya Siddha, Siddha Yatra in the inscription from 683 might mean that the king in question had made a pilgrimage to the to Telagabatu in order to celebrate the victory of over Sri Vijaya. If this assumption is correct, the inscription if if this assumption is correct. The inscription cannot possibly refer to the founding of this kingdom. Peculiar also are two irregular blocks of hardened clay which three of four lines of Sanskrit in lead Palawa writing. All these inscriptions were made from the 6th to 10th centuries. In the neighborhood lies the top of Ratu Sinuhun, a Mohammedan princess or a Mohammedan princess. Who grew famous by the giving of various laws, she died in the beginning of the 17th century. Her grave is the holiest of Palembang, at night faithful, at night faithful Mohammedans see a column of fire arising from it. It contains marvelous wood carvings. Perhaps the situation of both monuments on this place is not an is not an ancient, is not an accident. Telaga Batu, 
may have been sacred for a, from a very remote time. About 100 meters west of the place where the inscriptions were found on the opposite side, on the opposite side of the road are several heaps of brick rubbish, perhaps the remains of ancient shrines. At the present times, at the present time, there are only Mohammedan graves here, going in south east, going in a south easterly direction. One soon arrives at the group of temples at Gading, Gading Sutra, which I discovered in January 1935, according to the tradition. Gading Sutra, Gading Sutra was a nobleman from Java who fled to Palembang after the after the fall of Mojo Pait about 1528, founding a dynasty there which ruled until 1823. There is therefore some reason to surmise that the grave temples were built during, were built during the 16th century. Formerly, each building was covered by a tile roof resting on wooden beams. On the, now, there are only a number of brick walls decorated with crosses and medallions. On the third side is a flight of steps. One of the temples was originally built, built of natural stone. Later, an outer casing of brick was made with an entirely different ornament. Among the ring lay a beautiful image dating from the 8th to the 10th centuries. 1.18 meter high, representing a standing god in festive dress with ear ornaments, and armlets and necklace, a garment with loops on both hips and draperies, and drapier, draper, draperies reaching almost to the ankles, 11 strands of hair fall over back and shoulders. The left leg is slightly bent, head and arms and feet are missing. Now, far away, lay a lotus cushion. A cornerstone of terracotta also came to life. A true search of the field revealed the trunk of an elephant, the fragment of an animal head, and the relief of a parrot within a garland. Not of this group of buildings, on the hill Mankubumi lie two more brick monuments, about 140 meter, about 140 meter westward is the shrine of a certain Palembahan, which is similarly decorated with crosses and medallions. Here also, some of the walls have been renovated without taking into consideration the original plan. On, this, on the south side, two flights of steps have collapsed, so that loose stones lie scattered along the length of the wall. The floor of the tomb was broken open, at the depth of about 1.25 meter of plank was spawned, but underneath lay nothing. In the southern east, in the south easterly direction, on the opposite side of the river, three beautiful bronze images were discovered in 1929, representing Maitreya, Lokeswara, and Buddha. They are related to the art of Middle Java, and thus were made in the 8th to the 10th centuries. Maitreya is the Buddha, who is the future will descend on earth in order to save humanity. Lokeswara is the Lord of the Prison World Order and is the Lord of Prison World Order and the special patron of the Buddhist Church. In his crown is sitting an image of spiritual father Amitabha, the Buddha of the West. Among the most interesting discoveries in each is Palembang is a form of bronze Siwa image. 77, 77 cm high, which also dates from the Middle Java period. Around the hips, the god wears a tiger skin. The upper hands hold a fly plan and a rosary, and the lower hand of a little, the lower hand a little jar. From the left shoulder, a snake extends across the chest. His head is to be seen on the shoulder. The hair is dressed in the in the traces. One on the forehead is a third eye. This beautiful, this beautiful art object lay together with three other ones images of a much later date 
14th until 15th century, representing Siwa, Brahma, and Vishnu, and in various, various ways, giving evidence of Javanese influence. The first god is standing on a lion, the second on a goose, and the third on a Garuda. These are probably statues portraying the, the kings. Who knows if they were not worshipped in the temple, Mau, mausoleums of Mankubumi or Panembahan, as early as 1225, Chao Kwa mentions golden statues of the kings of Sriwijaya. Perhaps he meant gilded bronze images. These four statues are now in the museum at Batavia, where it's standing to the inscription with snakes. A few, a few kilometers farther, a, a few kilometers farther west, there seems to have been a shrine at the at the place where now is found the Mohammedan grave Chandi Angsoka. At any rate, several terracotta cornerstones of a Hindu character were brought to a light. There is also a great block of natural stone with a triangular gravity in the upper surface. Could this have been a Buddhist altar with the triangular symbol of fertility tricona tri tricona in the vicinity in the vicinity lay in the vicinity lay fragments of, of elephants. One of them carries a lion in his shoes. A rampant lion, badly damaged, was also found. The ta the right half of a gigantic monster of a gigantic monster head and two smaller, beautiful color heads all of terracotta and influenced by Java, a color head of natural stone was included. The most ancient relic of Hindu Buddhist influence in Sumatra, so ancient that it attended the era of Sri, the era of Sri Vijaya's greater power by at least three centuries, is a huge granite image of Buddha, since granite is not found in Palembang, it must have been brought from elsewhere, probably from the island of, ba of Bangka. One can, one can imagine how difficult it must have been to transport this enormous statue over the, sea, over the sea. It was discovered in fragments, and when I have succeeded in making out the head, was reconstructed in the garden of the, pa of the Palembang Museum of Antiquities. The first morning after the head, had been placed on the body, the image was surrounded, was surrounded by white flowers and by white flowers and cakes. Brought by the Malay villagers, it was pleasant and rather moving to see how after 14 centuries of oblivion, the Buddha was suddenly restored to honor and, as it were, awakened to new life. We had the head fastened to the torso with bronze pigs. For this purpose, it was necessary to, to chip small holes in both parts to be filled later with molten metal. It was a difficult task since the granite naturally offered a good deal of resistance. Moreover, the coolie entrusted with his work was very superstitious. One morning, he looked very downcast, and when, it, and when I asked Ali what is the matter, he replied, Oh, Tuan, this night I had such a terrible dream. I saw the image walking to the town with his head under the heart, under his arm. Maybe it would be a good thing if we had a chicken slaughtered for him. Don't you think so? Well, of course I agreed because I am very stupid myself. A kilometer to the south at Bukit Seguntang and vicinity lay the left lay the left half of very large Malay inscription of a, and a golden plate with the Buddhist articles of feet. At the same place, were found several decorated natural stones and bricks chiseled with a form letters, probably gilt signs. Very interesting are the fragments of Bodhisattva image, originally a most life-size. The features are full and gentle. The hair is dressed in tresses confined in front by a band with gossets and at the back at the back may be seen a cord. For the left shoulder for the left shoulder a broad band extends across the chest. The lower part of the body is dressed in a smooth garment, fastened around the waist by means to a to a flat of to a flat giggle 
wide which is tied in front a loop and the two ends hanging down together with a portion of drapery remarkably a bronze buddha hat with a twisted band bandeau with rosettes to the south is on the northern bank of the river Kedu Kedukan Bukit, the well-known inscription of 683 AD was found. It, on, it announces that a king has set still had set has set sail in order to attain magic power Siddha Yatra. He left Menanga Tambang with an army of 20,000 20, men. He came here and founded the city of Sriwijaya on a place which formerly was called Malayu, Malayu. The present inhabitants of Palembang still know that the rivulet Tatang, not far from here, formerly was called Malayu. A district, Tanah Malayu, lies upstream on the Musi. Between this patch and Palembang is an island Pudujaya, Wuruwijaya, remaining of the famous city of Sriwijaya. The excavations at, the, at Kedukan Bukit produces a god's hat and a pedestal. Formerly, there was a second stone with inscription. Perhaps it contained the word Siddha Yatra, and this spot was sacred at Telaga Batu, where in January 1935, I found a copy of document of 683, consisting of six lines and chiseled of a rectangular stone. Downstream, also on the north and back men, lay a gas heavy pedestal, where the inhabitants also tell of a seated Bodhisattva image which has, alas, sunk into the mud. About five kilometers to the northwest of 14 line sandstone, inscription was found at Talang Tuo. It announced that 684, a park, was made by order of certain Jaya Nasa. The tree, the tree planted here must be a blessing to all creation, thereby a awakening to thought of the Buddhist faith and recalling the mystic body of the diamond Vajra Sarira. In former times of the book at the Bukit Siguntang included at least four, four Hindu shrines, one at the summit, one at the west base, one at the base of the hill to the southeast and one about two kilometers farther north where the great Buddha image was found. Evidently, this hill country was sacred long before was sacred long before the coming of the Hindus. For Malay legends relate that a descendant of Alexander the Great Iskandar Zulkarnain descended on the Bukit Siguntang. Two old window, two old widows who had a field in these hills. One night saw the mountain enveloped in a very glow. On approaching they saw on approaching they saw a man seated on a white buffalo. He became the first he became the first king of Palembang and his name was Sri Turi Burana. A great a few years later he went over the sea and founded the city of Singapore, where he remained until his death. Perhaps we may, infer, we may infer from this that Sriwijaya was transferred to Singapore. The graves of Siskandar Zulkarnain's descendants were still to have been on the Bukit Siguntang a century ago. They were, there were four heaps of stone lying in a row, presumably from very historic times. Close by was, of the, close by was the footprint of certain demang labor down. This same, on this same spot, a saint from Mojo Pahit is also supposed to have lived. It was, it was he who gave the celebrated hero Sipai Lila supernatural powers by spitting into his mouth. For centuries, the natives of Palembang swore their most sacred oath on this mountain, and to this day, the graves on its summit are visited by pilgrims, by pilgrims and strewn with flowers downstream. On the right bank on the, of the Mushi lies the Gunung Mahmiru, the second mountain which formerly offers Serot Palembang. But the ape Anuman, but the ape Anuman snatched off its top and hurled it at the wounded giant Rawana. But he is not yet dead. His blood still flows and fattens the separate feast of Singapore. 
On the other side of the river lies the Batuan Par. The ship turned into stone. It belonged to the trader Dempu Awang, who became rich but disowned his mother, whereupon he changed him into the bird lung. His ship was turned into stone. This legend is known throughout all Borneo and Sumatra. All chronicles give us interesting particulars concerning this kingdom. Thus, they relate that a small island is a far large of volcano, the summit and flanks of which are inaccessible, be inaccessible because everything that comes into its vicinity is consumed by fire. In the, in the daytime, it throws out great clouds of smoke and by night a glowing fire. At its foot are cold, at its foot are cold and hot pools. Evidently, the famous volcano Krakatau is meant. On a certain day, the ground opened is the ground opened in Sanford Sea, Sriwijaya, and thousands of craters appeared, which divided into huts and spread the cover of mountains. The inhabitants could take as many as they liked. Subsequently, the fissure was filled up with trees and bamboos. This story is still related in the Batak lands. We heard it several times. Many places are also indicated where the cattle are supposed to have emerged from the ground. One such, a, one such place lies between Ujung Batu and Ujung Jilok in Padang Lawas, to the left of the road. It is called Bulu Sipa, Sipa, Runga, Sipa Rungaung. Whenever the king appeared outside the palace, he was carried. He was he was carried on a golden coach, above which was a golden baldakin. Silken umbrellas protected him from the sun. He went sailing in a boat which in the 19th century had a prow adorned with a serpent's head, while he was protected by God's arm with golden lenses. His soldiers were unsurpassed in courage and attempt for death. For he mounted the throne, a golden image was made of him and at his death and cremation, his followers slipped into the flames. In token of mourning, the people saved their heads. The king was only allowed to eat sago because the consumption of rice would result in dry and poor harvest. He was also compelled to bathe in rose water to prevent floods. Religious ablutions still occupy an, an important role among, the, among, among all the peoples of Sumatra, as they are thought to, to affect sickness, accidents, and evil influences. The Chinese Chronicle from the year 1225 Kilates in order to protect the capital from attacks, there was formerly an iron chain stretch over the Musi. This chain could be raised or lowered by an ingenious device. Later, after many years of peace, when the chain was no longer necessary, it was deposited on the bank, when for a long time it was an object of veneration among the natives. In the 17th century, a red cannon was also worshipped in Palembang. It was wrapped in red silk, strewn, in, strewn with flowers with flowers, and perfumed with incense. Here also, we see the veneration of the magic power of metal. Sriwijaya also had a garden full of magic flowers, chiefly roses in many colors. No one was able to pick them, however, for they then were consumed by a mystic fire. Greatly trouble was caused by the numerous crocodiles. One day, an Indian came who declared that he would charm them. And indeed, they did no harm to a man condemned to death, whom the king had ordered to be thrown, to be thrown into the river. Next day, the king announced that he would like to see the performance repeated. When the Indian had put crocodiles under a spell, the king suddenly had him seized and beheaded, and since that, the ta and since that time, the crocodiles of Serira, Srivijaya, are entirely, are entirely harmless, concluded the 7th century chronicle. 
to her to bed that the writer did not prove the truth of his assertion by hurling himself among the crocodiles. Towards Sumatra, it is still believed that there can be a sort of friendship between human beings and crocodiles. Every man has, has a special crocodile which takes him on its back to distant places and protects him from possible dangers. During the annual goings contest, during the annual going contest on the Queen's birthday, on the Queen's birthday, some males always besiege the guardian crocodile to give speed to the gods. At the time of the Mohammedan, at the time of the Mohammedan first approaches, the people are seized by a certain agitation. At sunset, many hasten to the Musi and gaze intensely across the water, and no wonder, for at any moment may appear the sacred crocodile with a scar of on its on its head, and every child knows that this crocodile is really Raden Tuka. A novel from the court of Sultan Mansur, 1704 and 1720, who was con commanded by, by his master to commit murder, but by a fatal accident, struck the Sultan's own brother. There, he was then changed into a crocodile and lived henceforth in the churchyard of the Kebon Gede, west, the west of the city. On once a year, However, just before Puasa, he swims down the Mushi as far as the Sekanak ascends this river and pays humble tribute to the grave of Chin de Walang, the illustrations, the illustrious Sultan of Palembang. Before concluding this chapter, we wish to call attention to a subject which certainly is deserving of further study, i.e., the wood carving of Palembang. As early as 1349, Wang Taiyuan mentions it with appreciation and also tells of the and also tells of the art of enamel world of enamel wood Chang Jukwa in 2025 in in 1225 and Ma Huan in 1413 until 15 also mentions aloe and sandalwood throughout the East Indies it is quite common for the woods to be more or less richly Colored and also in Palembang. The art of wood carving has fallen into disuse, but if one makes a careful search, one may still find various dogs, brittle chests, mirrors, boxes, orcs, and bird, orcs, bird cakes, bird cage, weapon racks, seals, and plates with magnificent wood carving, often gilded or covered with red enamel, painting with fine black, light, black lines. Lotus flowers and buds, conventional leaves, leaves, tendrils, spirals, and volutes occur in surprising variation, usually of a pronounced, pronounced Chinese character. Ironwood tembesu is the favorite material. Especially beautiful are the grave pillars. Are the grave pillars still found here and there is and there in old Malay cemeteries? They terminate in three points. The decoration consists of three pendants and a medallion, a motif which may only be used by the sultan's descendants. Usually, these graves are sheltered by a tiled roof, as may, as may be seen over the grave of Nya Nubetet, the favorite wife of Sultan in Lemah Bang. The little house has beautifully painted panels, and under, and under the ceilings is an arabesque of carved wood. Now, however, now, however, all is decayed and destroyed by moisture. Here and there appears the first vision of pale gold flowers, flowers and leaves, but that is all. Now rich fans surround the beautiful tomb, covering it with a soft green pearl. Truly the Mohammedan poet was right when he said, When the world shall pass, the world shall not endure, the world is as a house, made by the spider.